Season of the Splicer has introduced a total of 33 legendary weapons into the loot pool. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the top must-have picks out of these 33 total weapons so that you know firsthand what the best of the best is and what weapons you should spend your time farming. Of course, just like all my videos of this kind, we're going to be going over why you want these weapons, what the individual god rolls are, as well as how to farm and get your hands on said weapon to begin with. Today's video is also going to be in the style of a top 10 list, but keep Keep in mind that I'm not placing any of the weapons on this list in any particular order, and some spots may have more than one weapon due to similarities. Now, before we do jump into it, you guys know that I don't do sponsor stuff all that often, but whenever we do, we like to do it for a good cause. I just want to let you guys know that my G Fuel code is 30% off on the website right now, which is a boost up from the regular 10%. You guys can use code NUT on the website, and 100% of the proceeds made from my code go straight to St. Jude Children's Hospital. So, if you guys have been wanting to try G Fuel for the first time, maybe get a starter kit, or just restock on it and get a huge discount, then you can right now by clicking the link in the description. 100% of our proceeds go straight to St. Jude, so click the link in the description if you're interested. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, to start today's video off, I wanted to choose the perfect weapon. Whenever it comes to a lot of the loot in Season of the Splicer, you have either really good stats, really cracked perk combinations, or extremely unique weapons that we haven't really seen before. And this weapon right here is pretty much the embodiment of all of that. Of course, I'm going to be talking about the Ignition Code Grenade Launcher. Now, this weapon right here belongs to the lightweight frame archetype of GLs, and you can actually farm it via the Override Seasonal Activity, and you can also farm it via the Umbral Engrams. This weapon right here is one of the best weapons that we've seen in a very, very long time. The Ignition Code is known not only for being a kinetic lightweight frame for a change, but also for having an extreme crazy perk combination in the form of the likes of slide shot. If you have yourself an ignition code with this perk, instead of spending your time actually reloading the weapon, all you have to do is sprint for a short duration and slide on the floor, and your weapon is instantly reloaded, giving it an absolute insane rate of fire whenever it comes to a grenade launcher. Taking a look at some of the perks that you can get on this weapon, you have the likes of spike nades as your magazine, as well as something like slide shot, maybe even ambitious assassin if that's your thing in the first column, and then something like a damage perk with one for all. But honestly, I think you should go one step further, just completely ignore the likes of Ambitious Assassin and kind of play into this weapon's strong suit. Whenever it comes to ignition code, I don't really think of this weapon as much of an ad clear weapon. You have weapons like Int the Vessel and the Salvager Salvo that pretty much do that much better than the ignition code can. But what they can't do as far as the ignition code is concerned is actually deal really good boss damage. Whenever it comes to a really good god roll for the ignition code, you could go with something like spike grenades for the extra impact damage, slide shot for the crazy rate of fire, and vorpal if you want to try to get as much damage on those high health targets as possible. But it doesn't even stop there. You can also play into the strengths of slide shot as well by throwing on blinding grenades on this grenade launcher, giving it absolute insane potential for blinding enemies as your rate of fire is going to be through the roof. You can also go with a perk like danger zone in the final column to give yourself more more blast radius to blind more enemies, and this weapon right here can definitely make for either a really good boss damaging weapon when you don't have your super or heavy up, or a really good utility weapon and probably the best utility weapon whenever it comes to blinding enemies and things like raids or in nightfalls. Now moving on over from the ignition code, I want to talk about two absolutely cracked SMGs that we ended up getting this season, and these weapons are the Stochastic Variable and the Shiura's Wrath. Talking about the Stochastic Variable, variable first. This weapon right here is a future war cult SMG. It's a lightweight frame, meaning that it has 900 RPM, and it comes from the world loot pool or the umbral engram system. Now lucky for me, I was actually able to score a god roll of this weapon within the first two days of the season, and I've been singing its praises ever since. This weapon right here is probably the best PvE SMG, shy of the Ikelos SMG because of things like Warmind Cells. But taking a look at the rolls on this weapon for PvE, you have the likes of a pendant mag as the magazine to give you a boost to your bullets with no downsides. You also have things like Ambitious Assassin and Feeding Frenzy in the first column, as well as things like Dragonfly and Multi-Kill Clip in the second column. Now, for this weapon specifically, if you want to get the most out of it, I would suggest going with a Pended Mag, Feeding Frenzy, and Multi-Kill Clip. The amount of damage that this weapon can output is absolutely 
absolutely ridiculous. I have been in love with this thing since the day that I got it, and I think it's one of the best SMGs in the game by far. If you don't have the stochastic variable, I highly suggest that you get your hands on it. Now, despite it being a 900 RPM, which is known for being really good in PvP, this weapon isn't all that great, and I wouldn't suggest farming out a PvP roll of it, and that's kind of where the Shigura's Wrath comes into play, because although it's a different archetype, being a 600 round per minute SMG, it's actually probably the best precision frame that we've ever had. It also has a little bit of PvE usage, and we'll go over that really quick, because Shigura's Wrath is the only void SMG in the game that isn't Sunset. So if you're going with something like PvE perks, the only things that you can really go with is stuff like a Pended Mag and Tac Mag, as well as something like Killing Wind to help reduce damage fall off, as well as damage perks like Kill Clip and Adrenaline Junkie. Unfortunately though, for the first column, you don't really have really good perks there that help in PvE, so its PvE usage is fairly limited. But the PvP usage is where Shigura's Wrath shines through, and going with a role like Accurized Rounds, Killing Win, and Kill Clip is absolutely ridiculous. Now of course you do have a little bit of flexibility, there are some pretty decent perks in that first column. Pretty much all of them are fairly good, but the reason I like Killing Win so much is because it really plays into the strengths of the weapon as well as Kill Clip, because whenever you do get a kill, you're going to end up reloading, you're also going to have that extra movement speed from Killing Win, as well as extra range to deal more damage from farther away. And what makes Shigura's Wrath a very unique weapon is that it's actually an SMG with the range of an auto rifle, meaning that you can actually have some really far away gunfights with this SMG, and if you have Kill Clip enabled, then chances are you're going to absolutely melt through your enemies. Unfortunately, I was never able to score myself a Kill Clip roll of this weapon, but it's one of those SMGs that I keep my eyes out for because it's absolutely nasty, and if you like the antiope from times past, you'll absolutely love this thing too. Shigura's Wrath comes from Trials of Osiris, and if it's ever the 3 win reward, I highly suggest getting your hands on it. Now, moving on from there, let's go ahead and talk about another PvP weapon here at number 8, and this weapon right here is practically the messenger of Season of the Splicer, as it's one of the best pulse rifles that you can use in PvP, and of course, I'm talking about the Grid Skipper. Now, the Grid Skipper does differentiate itself as it is a rapid fire frame pulse rifle, and we don't have many of those in the Crucible, but the Grid Skipper is just one of the best pulses hands down. It's one of my favorite feeling weapons, it absolutely melts enemies at range, and in my opinion, it's definitely a top pick for the Crucible, especially if you like using longer ranged weaponry. Now, unfortunately, this weapon does suffer the same fate as Shigura's Wrath, as it doesn't really have two complete PvE perks to kind of complement it, whereas with the Shigura's Wrath, you know, you only have something like Kill Clip to give you some extra damage. Grid Skipper kind of suffers in that department as well, so I don't really suggest using it much in PvE, so we're going to focus on the PvP side of things. Of course, for the perks, you have the likes of High Cal as well as Ricochet as the mag, but I suggest High Cal because of the extra flinch. You have things like Tunnel Vision, Moving Target, Heating Up, as well as Multi Kill Clip and Snapshot Sights in the last slot. Now, whenever it comes to the role that I personally would like to use on this weapon, it's going to be something along the lines of High Cal as well as Tunnel Vision and Multi Kill Clip. And of course, Tunnel Vision is going to give you some better aim assist as well as aim down sight speed after a kill. And personally, it's a pretty damn good weapon for PvP. Multi Kill Clip, of course, is going to ramp up the damage of this weapon after a kill and allow you to melt enemies even faster. Grid Skipper is just, all in all, one of the best pulse rifles I think that I've ever used. It just feels really good, you can get it very easily, it comes from the override activity, same thing with the Umbral Ingram decoder, you can get it from there as well, and it's just a really awesome feeling pulse rifle. It is unfortunate that it doesn't have that much PvE usage, but this weapon right here pretty much rekindled my love for pulses and PvP, and I definitely gotta give it that. Moving on over from the Grid Skipper, let's go ahead and talk about a weapon that's on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, and that's gonna be a rocket launcher known as the Hezen Vengeance. Now, this weapon right here comes from the Vault of Glass, and it's an aggressive frame rocket, and it really differentiates itself with a perk that you may have heard of known as Overflow. Now, what you haven't heard of is a perk named Overflow on a heavy weapon until now. Hezen Vengeance can roll with the likes of Impact Casing, Overflow, as well as things like Vorpal, as well as Timed Payload, and maybe Cluster Bombs if that's your thing for PvE. For me personally, though, this weapon 
right here makes for the perfect Grandmaster Nightfall rocket launcher. Having something like Overflow just to overfill my magazine just by running over something like special ammo is really awesome because you have perks like Clown Cartridge that require you to actually shoot the weapon and waste your ammo before you're able to get two back-to-back -back rockets. The Hezen Vengeance is one of the most unique weapons in the entire game because of this perk alone. It's pretty much on the same level as the Ignition Code whenever it comes to unique perks, and Overflow just makes this weapon feel fantastic. Now if you want to, you could go with something like Auto Loading Holster as well as Lasting Impression, but at that point you would practically have a Code Duello, so whenever it comes to Hezen Vengeance, I highly suggest playing into its strong suit. Now moving on over from the Hezen Vengeance, at the number 6 spot, I'm actually going to be featuring two Scout Rifles, which is something that you might not have expected in a top must-have weapon list. Of course, we're going to be talking about the Vision of Confluence, as well as the Hung Jury being a bit of an honorable mention alongside it. Now, the Vision of Confluence is by far the best feeling scout rifle I think this game has ever seen, as far as legendaries are concerned. Unfortunately, it is of the Precision Frame archetype, which is the weakest archetype scout rifle in the game, but this weapon right here just feels absolutely phenomenal, and it has really Really good perks to boot. Taking a look at the perk list, we have things like Appended Mag as well as High Cal. We have Rewind Rounds in the first column, which basically just loads ammo back into your magazine based on how many hits you have on an enemy. And of course, in the final column, we have a slew of really good perks. We have things like Firefly for Warmind Cells, Disruption Break for Grandmasters, as well as Frenzy and Kill Clip to kind of help you out with damage. But Frenzy is probably going to be the play because of the likes of Rewind Rounds. Vision of Confluence is a pretty damn cracked weapon, not only because of the perks, but just because of how this weapon feels. It's one of the best feeling scouts in the game, and of course, whenever it does come to like the individual god roll for this weapon, I highly suggest using it for GM content, because that's mostly when you'll need a weapon like this to stay far away. Thankfully, Vision of Confluence is a solar weapon, meaning that it does have usability against match game, so going with something like High Cal or Appended with Rewind Rounds and Disruption Break or Frenzy, and you're looking at yourself a pretty damn good Grandmaster Nightfall weapon. Now speaking of which, the Hung Jury kind of also falls in this category as well, but just a little bit less in my opinion. It doesn't have an element, meaning that it's less usable in things like Nightfalls. However, this weapon will definitely come into play if you ever find yourself using the likes of Divinity inside of a GM. Taking a look at the perks, it just has absolutely insane perks for a Grandmaster. You can go with something like Accurize Rounds to keep yourself from having damage fall off, something like Rapid Hit to give yourself better reload, as well as One for All as a damage boost, or Explosive Payload, which is just a flat 15% or 10% damage boost depending on where you hit the enemy. It has very, very good Grandmaster Nightfall rolls, so if you ever do see yourself using a Divinity, this weapon might be perfect, and assuming that Scout Rifles ever do get a buff, it also has a very good casual PvE roll, as you can get the likes of something like Appended Mag, Subsistence, as well as Firefly. And fun fact, Firefly and Subsistence actually do have synergy with each other, so any enemies that get killed with the Firefly explosion will actually reload rounds into your magazine. So both of these weapons are really good for Grandmaster Nightfalls, but weapons especially like the Hung Jury could definitely see a lot of casual PvE usage, assuming that Scout Rifles ever do get a buff. Vision of Confluence comes from the Vault of Glass, while Hung Jury comes from the Nightfall playlist. If you ever find yourself frequently in either of those activities, definitely keep your eyes out for these weapons. Now, Moving on over from the Scout Rifles at number 6, let's go to move on over to number 5, and this is a weapon that I absolutely underballed hard at the beginning of the season. As I said, I didn't think it was going to be as good for PvP than it actually was, and it turns out that it's an absolute monster. Of course, I'm talking about the Chroma Rush Auto Rifle, and this weapon right here comes from the Override Seasonal Activity as well as Umbral Engrams, and it's one of the nastiest 720 RPM Auto Rifles I have ever used in my life. It has both both very good usage in PvP as well as PvE, but firstly, let's go ahead and talk about the PvP because that's what I really enjoy this weapon in. Of course, like I said, it is a 720 RPM auto rifle, and it comes with some really, really good PvP perks. We have the likes of Accurize Rounds for the extra range, Feeding Frenzy for the reload in the first slot, as well as something like Tunnel Vision to kind of help you out with aim assist after a kill, and then the likes of Kill Clip as well as Rampage. My own personal role, I would say, would be something like Accurize Rounds, Feeding Frenzy, frenzy and kill clip because once you get kill clip activated it's kind of like the grid skipper in the sense that you just get so much damage in so little time because of the high fire rate it's just ridiculous 
Chroma Rush is one of my favorite PvP weapons of all time in terms of just how fun it is whenever it comes to using it. Are you going to see this weapon all that much in the likes of Trials of Osiris? Eh, probably not because of the current meta that we're in, but for something like Quick Play, this weapon right here is insanely fun and insanely useful as well. Now, PvP isn't the only thing that this thing specializes in. Of course, it has very cracked PvE roles in the likes of something like a Pended Mag or Tag Mag. You have things like Feeding Frenzy and Subsistence, as well as Kill Clip and Rampage. Unfortunately, though, it is a kinetic weapon, meaning it doesn't have an element, but it still is a very very good weapon, especially to use in things like casual PvE, and if you're ever doing a GM, you could have something like Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle and use a Divinity for things like Overloads. But Chroma Rush is a very good auto rifle, one of the best that we've had in a very long time, and I highly suggest getting your hands on it. Now, moving on over from the Chroma Rush, I'm going to talk about two sniper rifles right quick. These sniper rifles come in the form of the Praetis Revenge, which comes from the Vault of Glass, as well as the Yuzume RR4, which comes from the Nightfall playlist. Now, both these weapons are very similar but also quite different. The Praetis Revenge specifically specializes in the likes of boss DPS. It's one of the best boss DPS sniper rifles in the game, if not the best, and that's thanks to the likes of Rewind Rounds as a perk. You can go with perks like Tactical Mag as well as Extended Mag, Rewind Rounds as well as Frenzy and High Impact Reserves for the Praetis Revenge if you want to get off absolute insane damage. Of course, Rewind Rounds is pretty much just a better version of things like Triple Tap. It practically makes the weapon Whisper of the Worm, but but legendary and you can get off so many bullets so quickly without ever needing to stop that it makes Praetis Revenge a very good boss DPS weapon. Now just because it's really good for boss DPS that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for everything and that's kind of where the Yuzume RR4 comes into play as it's a bit more of a flexible snipe rifle and it's very much similar to the Adored except it can get a much higher magazine size. So taking a look at the Yuzume you can get the likes of Appended Mag as well as Extended Mag on this thing. You could also go with the things like Triple Tap and Vorpal, and I think that makes this weapon a pretty good weapon for things like Champions overall. It might not be able to get out as much DPS as the Praetis Revenge, but it has a lot of flexibility as it can be used for things like bosses, as well as things like Champions and Grandmasters, and I think it's a bit more usable in that department anyways. Both these weapons are pretty damn flexible at what they do, they're very good snipe rifles, and I didn't want to pick one over the other. Now moving on over to the number 3 spot, we actually have 3 separate weapons at the same time. Time. And the reason for this is because they're all separate archetypes, meaning that they appeal to different players in completely different ways. We're going to be taking a look at the Found Verdict, the Reese Walker, and the Sojourner's Tail. Now, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Sojourner's Tail first. This weapon right here is a precision frame shotgun, and unlike the other two, it actually has a little bit of PvE usage, but with all of these shotguns, you mainly want to use them in PvP. Now, the Sojourner's Tail comes from Override. You can also get it from the Umbral Engrams. It is a slug shotgun and it has some really really good perks on it and some very unique perks as well. The only PvE perks that you would really want to go on with this weapon is something like Assault Mag, Auto Loading Holster, and Dragonfly. You don't really want to use this in the same way that you use things like Heritage and First In Last Out as it's just not going to be as good for DPS phases because of the perks that it has but you can play into its strengths and make it into a pretty fun weapon with the likes of something like Dragonfly and you can also spawn Warmind Cells with this if you have at the Rasputin. But the main reason you would end up using this shotgun is of course for PvP as it has an absolutely cracked PvP roll with the likes of Accurize Rounds, Quick Draw, and Opening Shot making it a very good legendary version of the Chaperone. Now moving on over from the Sojourner's Tale we have the Reese Walker. This is a lightweight frame shotgun. This means that you'll be able to run much faster with it and be able to handle it a lot quicker. It's not going to have quite as much range as the likes of the aggressive frames but it's still a very 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 good archetype and one of my personal favorites. You can go with the likes of Rifled Barrel as well as Full Choke for the barrel, Accurize Rounds for the extra range, Slide Shot or Quick Draw, as well as Iron Reach or Vorpal. And of course, for me personally, my god roll would be something along the lines of Full Choke, Accurize Rounds, Quick Draw, and Iron Reach. Iron Reach is completely unique to the shotgun because it comes from the Iron Banner and it gives it some absolute insane range. It won't be able to outrange things like Fell Winners, but it is the best lightweight frame shotgun in the game and it's absolutely worth talking about. And lastly of course we have the Found Verdict. This thing right here pretty much one to one rivals the 
corners lie just about. It's an aggressive frame shotgun. It comes from the Vault of Glass, and you can get some really good perks. You can get things like full choke, rifled barrel, assault mag, accurized rounds, slide shot, surplus, as well as opening shot. This weapon right here is pretty much just another kind of Felwinner's Lie, except without shot package. If you've ever wanted to use something just a little bit different or have some slightly different, you know, kind of perk combinations or anything like that, then the Found Verdict might be the perfect shotgun for you. Me personally, though, out of all three of these, I think the Reese Walker is my personal favorite just because of how different it is compared to most of the other shotguns in the meta. Now, moving on over from the shotguns, let's go ahead and move on over to the number two spot, which features one of my favorite weapons of all time, the Empty Vessel. Now, this is a lightweight frame grenade launcher. It can come from the Vanguard playlist. You don't need to play Nightfalls. It just comes at the end of Strikes. And it's one of my favorite GLs of all time because of its war mine cell potential. If you use this weapon right here with the likes of Wrath of Rasputin, you're going to have yourself a Salvager Salvo, but with a lot nastier ad clear. Taking a look at the perks as well, you can get very similar perks to the Salvager Salvo or something quite different if you want to go that route. You can get the likes of Spike Nades as well as Auto Loading Holster, Ambitious Assassin, and Feeding Frenzy. And in the second slot, you have the likes of One For All, Multi Kill Clip, Swashbuckler, maybe even Vorpal if you want another damage perk. So you have some really good options there. But what really makes this weapon shine is actually its blinding nade potential on top of the Warmind Cell potential. So taking a look at the god rolls for the high end PvE gameplay, you have the likes of blinding nades as well as auto loading holster and stuff like disruption break, one for all, multi kill clip, swashbuckler. This means that you can shoot this weapon, you can blind enemies, you can stow it away and automatically load it while it's in your backpack, and if you do happen to kill any enemies, you also have a chance to have them drop Warmind Cells for even further ad clear once they're blinded. And of course, you also have things like Disruption Break for Grandmasters, which would be really good for knocking off Solar Shields. Absolutely love this weapon. It's definitely a top pick for anybody this season. Now, lastly, moving on over from the number two spot, we have the number one spot here on the list, and that, of course, is going to be going to the Fatebringer Hand Cannon from Vault of Glass. Now, the reason that I am such a big fan of this weapon and why I will always sing its praises to the end of time is because I wholesomely believe that it is the most versatile weapon in the game, especially for the likes of hand cannons. There are just so many different ways to use this weapon. You have the likes of the Destiny 1 roll. You can go with something like Accurized Rounds, Tac Mag, Appended Mag, something like Explosive Payload, which is just a flat damage bonus to all of your bullets, as well as something like Firefly to cause your enemies to explode. You also have the likes of a Grandmaster roll. You can get something like Accurized Rounds for the extra range, Explosive Payload for the damage increase, as well as Frenzy, which is going to be another damage increase that doesn't require you to do anything except for just be in combat. You can also go with something like a War Mind Cell build. You can go with the likes of Accurized Rounds, either Tac Mag or Appended Mag, Rewind Rounds to constantly have ammo in your magazine, as well as Firefly to explode and kill enemies and cause them to drop War Mind Cells. The reason you would want to go with Rewind Rounds over Explosive Payload is because sometimes Explosive Payload can cause Firefly to not proc, so Rewind Rounds would be the better option for Warmind Cells specifically. And of course, you also have PvP god rolls on this weapon with the likes of Accurized Rounds, Explosive Payload, as well as Opening Shot. This is just one of the most versatile weapons in the game. There's just so many different ways to use the Fatebringer, and I just absolutely love this hand cannon. I've been using it non-stop since I got my hands on it, and I wholesomely believe that it's definitely one of the best hand cannons this game has ever seen, just because of how much usability it has. But guys... That is it for this video. This is definitely one of the longest types of these videos that I've made, and if you made it to the end, my God, dude, I, I hope your brain doesn't hurt from the amount of information that's been spread today. Uh, we definitely talked about a lot of weapons. I think we talked about 15 in total for today's video, but that just goes to show you that almost half of the weapons from Season of the Splicer are absolutely worth farming out and getting your hands on. Of course, a little bit less if you don't play things like PvP, so weapons like Found Verdict or Reese Walker and Grid Skipper wouldn't necessarily apply to you, but I try to make these lists as inclusive as possible for pretty much any Destiny 2 
two player that's out there. But guys, that's pretty much it for the video. If you did watch up into this point, I really, really do appreciate it. People like yourself that watch the video all the way through, like the video, comment, or anything like that, or the reason why this channel has been so successful as of late with us getting so many new subscribers and so many new viewers and everything in between. So genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, I really, really do appreciate you watching the video all the way through. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.